and we will then address all the questions and answers at the end of the discussion. So, um, Dr. Frank, Dr. Minja, please um, proceed with your presentation. And thank you very much, everyone, for participating. Frank, please unmute. Thank you, Professor Makani. Uh, hopefully, everybody is able to see my screen. Is that correct, Professor Makani? Yes, your screen is visible. Right, Please perfect. proceed. Right, perfect. Excellent. Very good. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us again uh, uh, to uh, for this uh, scientific symposium. Uh, last week, I was supposed to be talking about the current trends in Africa. I'm sure everybody is following this. Uh, it's almost impossible to avoid uh, uh, the news about COVID-19, and uh, uh, this is going to be my outline. Um, Okay, so uh, briefly, I'm going to just review the global case totals. Are we going to talk about the Africa uh, case totals? And also, I want to briefly touch upon the COVID-19 epidemic phases and then just use our region of East Africa just to kind of talk a little bit about the trends in East Africa. Obviously, this news is becoming outdated uh, by the minute, uh, so please forgive me if I do not have uh, up-to-the-minute uh, updates uh, on this, on this uh, pandemic. So, so without uh, f further ado, so this is actually my slide from last week, right? So last week uh, we were going to have this symposium and uh, for unfortunate reasons we got attacked, but this was the slide. At that point, we had more than 700,000 cases worldwide and 30,000 deaths. So what happens when you wait exactly one week later? One week later, we have basically more than doubled the number of total confirmed cases and almost tripled the number of like total deaths uh, 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 from, from this pandemic. So basically, in long and short of it, I mean, we're all aware that this uh, pandemic is spreading wide and very, very fast. And at the global level, it's like spreading. And here I am based in uh, Connecticut, uh, United States, where we have the uh, undubious uh, 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 shall we say, uh, 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 a privilege of having the most uh, cases uh, reported in, in, the, in, the, in the world and probably the most number of deaths uh, uh, very, very soon, uh, and followed by Spain, Italy, and other countries, uh, including France, Germany. Uh, the other important point is that these five countries have now exceeded the total number of cases in China where the epidemic actually began. So it's a really astounding uh, 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 turn, of, turn of events and basically where quickly moved into the uh, uh, exponential phase where cases are doubling uh, more, uh, more than doubling within one week. So what is the case in Africa, right? So the case in Africa, things have been a little bit late to arrive and uh, for many, and because of that, I think uh, we are probably a little bit uh, uh, least prepared because we have not been dealing with this uh, um, uh, pandemic uh, as long as other countries and other parts of the world have. Again, I just wanted to keep this slide from last week. So this was the 30th of March. And a few things I want to kind of highlight again, at, at that point uh, last week, basically we were reporting a total of 4,800 uh, cases. And then uh, we had 152 cases. And these are from the AU uh, Union member states. I'm actually learning a bit of geography and politics around this. Uh, some quick questions like how many countries are actually a part of uh, uh, Africa, actually there are 55 countries. And at that point, you can see that we still had six, well, we had nine states that uh, had not reported uh, any, any, any case. So this was like last week. By this week, actually only three states have yet to report any cases. And that will just call your attention to basically the Western Sahara, uh, we have Lesotho here and we have the Comoros. And uh, one uh, point in case is basically, again, the countries that have been late or have not reported uh, any cases is not so much that they do not have the epidemic. Uh, what we suspected, they do not have capacity testing. And actually, when I was looking this data up this morning, uh, Comoros has no capacity to do any testing. I suspect the same maybe in Lesotho and maybe in Western uh, Sahara. But more importantly, talking about the doubling of cases and doubling of deaths, you can see that last week I said we had 4,000 800 cases and we have more than double that number of cases in one week 
and we have more, almost triple the number of cases. Remember, we had 152 deaths, but now we're reporting more than triple the number of deaths. And so uh, the long and short of it is that this pandemic has arrived on the continent and has arrived in force. And if anything, we are probably already experiencing a much uh, higher proportion of patients are not doing well and reporting more deaths uh, uh, than other uh, parts of the country, at least by the data uh, that is, that is uh, reported. And just, uh, you do want to share this dashboard here, which is from uh, Africa CDC, uh, which now basically, instead of sending those weekly or daily updates, now there's a dashboard. So you can actually go in real time and actually look at the total number of cases, the total number of deaths as uh, are being reported on the continent. And uh, to be honest, uh, Africa, again, is proven to be no exception, uh, despite all the misconceptions earlier, that maybe Africa, because of the hot climate or because of a uh, unique genetic uh, makeup or for whatever other reasons uh, we were going to be spared the worst of this disease. And you can see here that we already have like four countries on the continent who have well over a thousand, nearly like a thousand cases, namely Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, and, uh, and, uh, and South Africa. So let's pause for a second and talk about the epidemic phases. So this is a very interesting, I just kind of cropped this from the stepwise recommendations for response uh, based again from the Africa CDC. And this was the advice that was given depending on whether you can detect in which epidemic phase are you. Are we at phase zero? So I'm proud to say that, you know, Africa for many, many uh, months uh, of the epidemic, the epidemic began at the beginning, at the end of uh, December, we had remained in phase zero, which basically means no COVID cases were reported, right? So that's the sort of state of affairs almost all the way up until March. The first case actually reported in Africa was on February 14th, Valentine's Day, and that was reported in Egypt. And the countries in East Africa, for example, did not report their first cases until at least a month. So we did a really good job in sort of a first phase where basically we, I mean, at phase zero, we had no cases. But now we see that we have quickly moved from this phase zero I would believe that many countries are actually in phase two, if not already in phase three. Just to go briefly, phase zero, you have no reported cases. Phase one, you have one or more imported cases. I think many of us can actually remember when the first case of COVID-19 was reported in our respective countries. After that, you start to see an increasing number of imported cases, that is phase two. But I think in most African countries that are reporting cases, we have already moved into phase three, where we are beginning to see local transmission of cases. And very soon we may end up actually being in phase four, which is what we're experiencing in America, where basically there's unchecked uh, uh, and large outbreak uh, national uh, level transmission. And so again, the map of local transmission, this is last uh, two weeks ago, March 25th. At that time, we had several countries that had not reported any cases, but we did have some countries that are already reporting local spread. But the majority of countries are in this like lighter pinkish purple, where there's basically only imported cases. Flash forward about two weeks later, the majority of countries on the continent are reporting local transmission. And that basically we're moving into phase two and phase three, of the disease and very few countries have reported no cases, actually only three countries as we had sort of mentioned uh, briefly. <clears throat> so it's important now to move away from those individual numbers to look at what we call the epidemic curve. And again, these slides are a little bit outdated, but we can still talk through them. Basically the, what it's basically trying to say is that basically the first 50 days are very critical in controlling this disease. And this is compared to Europe. Europe before 50 days, they had already moved into the exponential part of the curve. And Africa was basically slowly trending along that area. Right now, this was before 40 days. Now we're actually day 55, exactly today, if you're counting from February 14. And we have surpassed 10,000 cases. So if this curve was going to be updated, Africa will be up here in terms of like accumulated phases. And so we are quickly moving into our exponential phase much, much, much uh, faster. Again, so let's look a little bit more closely and zoom in to the East Africa region. I'm sorry that this is not projecting as well as I'd hoped, but this is just looking at the East Africa community. We're gonna talk about six countries very briefly, meaning Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan, Rwanda, and Burundi, which form part of the East African community. So I took the uh, time to basically plot out the reported cases in all these uh, six uh, countries. And I just wanna talk for a few seconds ar around this trend. One, 
uh, these uh, countries basically reported their cases at different times. So Kenya was the first one to report on the 13th of March, followed by Rwanda, followed by Tanzania. Uh, one week later, Uganda reported the first case, and Burundi took almost another uh, week after that, 10 days to report their case, and South Sudan just reported their first case this weekend. So, and again, so this is a, a couple of issues when we're looking at the data is one, the countries are testing at different rates, clearly. So you can look, for example, at Kenya, which basically seems to be moving along an exponential curve, but they have even more data points. So every day, literally every day, there is a new cases being reported. So every day there's about 10 or 12 cases being reported and they've probably moved fastest ahead. So the question here is even looking at the regional uh, uh, level, is the epidemic much worse in Kenya or is Kenya doing a much better job of detecting their cases? I would tend to believe it's the latter, that they're doing a much better job detecting their cases compared to Rwanda, which follows after that in terms of their case detection rates and follow up by Uganda. And then when we come to Tanzania, we have only reported about 22 cases and we are reporting on average a new cases reported about two to three days. That's when we report our next uh, uh, case. So there's a lot of like a, 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 a difficulty in sort of understanding which phase of the epidemic we're in. Uh, and I think this is probably where we need to do uh, more uh, efforts uh, regarding that. And lastly, I do want to congratulate uh, our government and other governments for being forthcoming and a lot of the information. But again, there's a lot of information that is missing. And most importantly, what is our denominator? What, how many cases are being tested? And again, while we look at the global uh, case uh, distribution, the uh, continent-wide case distribution, then we come to the regional, even within the country, Right, slowly we're getting to see within the country that there is spread. The first case was in uh, uh, Arusha, then came to Dar es Salaam, then went to Zanzibar, and now we're seeing cases in Kagera and Mwanza. So you can see in the same country, uh, same as we're seeing in the USA, in the same country, different places are experiencing different phases of the epidemic. And it's much important for us to understand which phase of the epidemic we're in in order to target our response. So that was a brief overview. We went over the global case totals showing that we're doubling in case uh, confirmed cases and, and also doubling more than tripling the number of deaths that we're reporting both at the global scale and also in Africa. And we touched a little bit about the COVID-19 epidemic phases and showed the different trends that we're experiencing in East Africa, which are probably different when you look at the numbers based on the, uh, the type of testing and sampling that is being done. So thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Makani, for the opportunity to present this, uh, these uh, global trends. And now I'd like to switch uh, to the next uh, uh, presenter, uh, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Minja. Um, I'm not sure if Lucho has been able to um, dial in. Um, Lucho, are you um, available to give your presentation? Otherwise,